Hello everyone. I'm gonna try and make this video without being triggering. I've put a warning just in case, but um, this character is very controversial and it may upset some of you and I don't want that to happen. So if you're not comfortable, you can click off. That's okay, I don't mind. But if you are going to stay, then I won't say the full things, I won't go into detail anyway. If you're really morbidly curious, I have a link in the toy house which goes a bit more into detail, not into too much detail, but a bit more into detail because I don't know how much of this I can say without instantly getting nuked off the website. So let's just get into it now that we've established that. Today's character, their name is Hestia, and Hestia is a near human demon in hell. What does it mean? What does near human mean? Near human is a class of demon that looks like a human. Like, Hestia looks really humanoid just with like a horn on their head. And speaking of that horn, there is only one, and it's on the right side of their head. They do not have a left horn, just but just because why not? I don't have any visual representation of this, but I do have Hestia does have a second form, which is their raw demon form. Because even though they're in, they're a near human, that doesn't mean that they can no longer switch back into the raw demon in fits of intense anger or distress so the intense demon form is is a lot different from the near human um for one their eyes are no longer pink they're leaking an eerie sort of black fluid out and instead of having one horn they have two and they're huge and they have ribs on the exterior of the body and the chest cavity is exposed which means that there is a heart in there that is beating grossly and they also have giant black claws and forearms and in this state it is impossible to console them they are very physically and sexually violent during this stage there is nothing you can do to stop it as for the near human form, you can see that Hestia has dark burgundy hair and pink tips at the end um, and it sits at the shoulder most of the time but I do make it longer sometimes because I like fully hair on my character. They have pink eyes, vibrant pink eyes and an eyebrow slit in the right eyebrow as well as a moving snake tattoo that is sentient and it crawls around on the skin. You can see in the reference image I used that this, the tattoo is on the thigh, but in the drawing I've chosen to put it on the upper forearm. One interesting thing about Hestia is that they are completely sexless. They have no sexual genitalia, and that is for a reason, and I will go into that later. And oftentimes they are nude. They don't wear anything because there's no reason to. There's got nothing to cover up. Um, the only sort of like genitalia, I suppose, that all those only sort of things that they should be covering are their nipples. But I, I'm not drawing nipples, so I'm just, <laughs> I just gave them a one of the outfits from a reference sheet I did a couple years back. Um, speaking of being sexless, this also means that they have two different forms in which they can take which are either more feminine or more masculine. The only things that change are the, the face structure, the body structure, and the depth of the voice. So the, the masculine form is a bit taller and a bit skinnier, and the feminine is a bit shorter and a bit more curvy. Um, in terms of personality, Hestia <laughs> they're a horrific person. They are textbook of someone you should not be in alone alone in a room with. You should not be in a room alone with Hestia. 
um they are very manipulative they are a gaslighter and they frequently victim blame and feign innocence to avoid persecution and one thing about them is that they I guess you could say they're kind of sociopathic they have no regard for others emotions and um, how their actions will affect them and they are a known user as well um, they in terms of history Hestia's history is very very dark so I'm gonna be very blunt with their background so they as I stated were a horrific person they were very um, they were an abuser they were a mass and they were yeah they were never caught because of how they feigned their innocence around others they got away with everything until once when every single person that they had came up and came up about it and talked and got a judge into it and upon being cornered with this information Hestia did try to but their attempt failed and they ended up getting executed by electric chair anyway so then they arrive in hell and they are met by Lucifer and Lucifer of course has no mercy for those who have a black moral compass the way them the way that Hestia does um they were tortured very graphically and this resulted in the addition of the horn and the removal of the genitalia. Um, this was done without anesthesia as you'd imagine and it took quite a couple decades for Hestia in their rampant demon form to calm down and stop trying to fight and assault other demons and settle into a near human but they are never getting out of the purgatory they'll never go any higher than that they're stuck there until the end of time and that's just how it is other demons and near humans all know who Hestia is because of how aggressive they were when they first got into hell and they even steer away from them as a near human because they're still afraid of them because of the psychological warfare that they have the ability to go under. The other demons also say that Hestia's nudity is a protest to against having their genitalia removed they just walk around naked anyway. Hestia as a human no one really knows like what sex or gender Hestia identified with because they were always rather androgynous which may be linked to how they frequently switch between masculine and feminine and androgynous body shapes in hell. I've chosen to draw the more feminine one because I don't draw it as often but I'm gonna say that they lean towards the masculine form. Hestia has a couple relationships with other demons and other spiritual beings, one of them being the Hell Guardian, whose name is Rylan. I don't know if I'll ever get into him. I will one day, but upon meeting Rylan for the first time, Hestia was very heavily attracted to him, and now Rylan is utterly terrified of them and steers away from them at all cost. Hestia also has a relationship with the succubi and incubi that milk is related to, although it's not a positive one, and there is a lot of tension between them. It is very one-sided. Hestia is very like attracted 
to the succubi and incubi, but they do not. They're grossed out by what Hestia has done, despite being demons from themselves. And, well, yeah, that's the roller coaster that is Hestia. <laughs> They're pretty fucking horrific. And I do not condone this behavior. I am severely against this behavior, but writing a character with a black moral compass is something very interesting to me. And yeah, if this is not for the lighthearted this video so i'm not bothered if you chose to skip it anyway i guess i'll see you in the next one